Welcome to the Data Cloud video series brought to you by Salesforce. My name is Simon Connock. I'm a Data Cloud instructor here at Salesforce. In this video, we'll guide you through the process of ingesting data using the Sales Cloud Starter Data Bundle, including creating a data stream. Let's begin. We want you to click the Data Streams tab. Click New. This screen shows all the connectors you can use to ingest your data. We will select Salesforce CRM. Click Next. Now, when you use the starter data bundles to ingest data in Data Cloud, it automatically maps the data to the data model for you. One important note about ingesting from bundles is that it will import all of the objects in the bundle and map those for you. You can't remove these objects ingested through the data bundle at this stage. You can later, but not at this stage. This is like an all or nothing deal. Click the Sales Data Bundle. It will import account, contact, and lead objects. Click Next. This screen shows all the objects and fields in the Sales Data Bundle. Click the contact object on the left of your screen, as we will be using this for our use case. To include data from the contact object in profile matching rules, you must configure a few additional fields that will be mapped to the party entity. Click New Formula field on the right of your screen. Set the field label to Identification Name. Set the field API name to identification underscore name. Set the formula return type to text. So set the actual transformation formula to the string RAVG retail membership. Be sure to include the double quotes around the value. Now, one of the neat things about formulas in Data Cloud is you can test them. Click Test to verify the RAVG retail membership value that will be added to this field for each record. Click Save. Now, click New Formula field again, because, well, we want to add another formula field. This time, set the field label to Party Identification Type, and set the formula return type to Text. This time, the transformation formula is the string Loyalty Program. Again, be sure to include the double quotes around the value, and click Test to verify the value. Click Save. During the requirements phase, it was determined that the field label for RAVG retail membership number be changed to RAVG loyalty ID, because we can. You can scroll through the list of fields to search that, or you can use the search bar functionality at the top. Click the arrow next to the header label to arrange the field alphabetically and scroll to the field. Scroll to the field RAVG Retail Membership Number, and click the little pencil icon, and enter RAVG Loyalty ID, and select Apply. You also want to change the field API name. Clicking on the field API name value and clicking the pencil icon, and enter RAVG underscore loyalty underscore ID underscore C, and, and once again, click Apply. Now, we'll remove the fields in the contact object that are not required for the current use case. To do that, click the checkbox next to Required in the top header row to deselect all the fields not necessary to add to the stream. A message will appear that says required fields can't be removed. These fields will remain. You can close this message just by selecting the little cross. Now, click the checkboxes to add back the fields below that are needed for this solution. You can search the fields or scroll to the fields. The fields we're interested in are external ID, identification name, mobile phone, party identification type, and RAVG loyalty ID. You might want to scroll the field list to make sure all fields you need are there. Click Next. The category, refresh mode, and refresh schedule are all automatically set by the Sales Cloud Data Bundle and can't be changed. You can just admire them. Select Deploy. Data streams are now created, and data ingestion should begin shortly. 
The ingestion process can also be started manually, but you shouldn't need it at this stage. Find the contact with your org ID stream and click the drop down on the far right. Select refresh now, but you would only do that if you want to refresh things manually. There should be really no need to do that at this stage. Once all these are processed successfully, the last run status will change. You might want to click the refresh button at the top to check if the data stream has been refreshed. Next, we'll guide you through mapping the contact data lake object, or DLO, and modifying permissions for a field within the source CRM object, enabling it to be added to the data stream post ingestion. You can start mapping from the data lake objects tab or the data streams tab, your choice. Let's go to the data streams tab. Click on the contact data stream. This screen shows you the source object fields and details. From this screen, you can bring in additional source fields or formula fields later if needed. If you look at the right hand side, you will see that your contact object is mapped to account contact, contact point address, contact point email, contact point phone, and individual. A DLO can be mapped to one or more DMOs. We should always check this against our requirements document. We continue to emphasize that we should always prepare a requirements document to capture which DMOs we want to map our objects to. All of this work is done outside of Data Cloud in Excel Sheets or any other tool of your choice. This is where you created all your mappings and defined primary keys, foreign keys, and all your objects. It looks like this, and here we put in a sheet where we know which objects we want to map contact object to. So when we look at the requirements document, we see that we want to map it to contact point address, contact point email, contact point phone, individual, loyalty program member, loyalty member currency, and party identification. For our solution, we can simply remove the account contact mapping as it's not required. It's worth noting that when you delete a mapping, it is automatically saved. You don't need to manually click the Save button. On the right side, target contact points, channel, email, phone, etc., DMOs, represent contact details from individual across the various channels. Individual DMOs represent people in the database and their profile and demographic attributes. Let's start mapping contact point phone. When we review the mappings, we can see a mapping between business phone and telephone number, which is not required in our use case. Find the mapping between business phone and telephone number, and click the Manage Mapping icon, the one in the middle, to delete this mapping. You can scroll through the fields to find the fields and mappings, or use the search functionality at the top of the page. Here, as you can see, mobile phone is being mapped to two fields in a DMO. The reverse is not possible. Okay, a single DMO field can't have more than one source DLO field. Search for mobile phone on the left and telephone on the right. Click mobile phone, move the mouse towards the telephone number, notice the dotted line. Select telephone number under contact point phone DMO to complete the map. Next, create a mapping between the mobile phone in contact and the formatted E164 phone number in contact point phone. Now, this is the mapping we have done in the visual view with all those tram lines that you can see on the page there. We can also perform mapping in the table view. Let's map the next objects in the table view so you see the difference. Before you do switch between the views, you should always save your mapping though, otherwise your changes would be lost and that would be bad. We will map to the individual object in the table view. Click inside the Select Data Model Object box and then select a View Object Panel. Search for Individual. Review the automatic mappings that have been created by the Starter Data Bundle. Delete the mappings we don't need. Here, we will delete the photo URL mapping. Map external ID to external record ID and save the change. You can switch back to the visual view or continue to map in the table view, your choice. 
Here we'll switch back to the visual view to validate the external ID mapping. The auto-generated map included only some of the objects that are needed for our solution. There are a few additional objects that we should add to it. Let's add two more data model objects, loyalty program member and loyalty member currency. The loyalty program member object provides details about program membership, such as membership number. It also includes an object that joins other entities in the loyalty group to the individual. The loyalty member currency object contains details around program points. Select the pencil icon next to the data model objects. On this screen, you'll see a standard data model with standard objects that you can include in your target. If the object you need does not exist in the standard data model, you should have determined that during the requirements phase. You can create a new custom object from this screen. You can also create a custom DMO from the Data Model Objects tab in the Data Cloud UI, if you so choose. In the search field, enter Loyalty Member Currency. Select the little plus icon to add the DMO. In the search field, enter Loyalty Program Member. And once again, select the little plus icon next to Loyalty Program Member to add the DMO. Select Done. Now you'll see these DMOs as the mapping target. They will be on the right-hand side of your screen. We want to map these fields as determined during the requirements phase. Delete the mappings that are not needed, such as created date and last modified date. Map the primary keys for both DMOs. If you save without mapping primary keys, you will get an error. Every DMO must have a mapped primary key. Map contact ID to the loyalty program member ID, the primary key for loyalty program member. Map any other fields as per your requirements document. Remember, save your work. Now, there's one attribute on the contact object that we didn't ingest, but it is required for one of our segmentation use cases. This is not an unrealistic scenario. Sometimes you forget to do stuff. Go to the data streams. Click on Contact and click on Add Source Fields. You want to add the RAVG Retail Points Balance, which is currently missing. Let's enable Read Access for this field. So the way to do that is we need to go into Setup. So click on Setup in Salesforce. From the Setup, enter Permissions in the Quick Find box, and then select Permission Sets. Select the Data Cloud Salesforce Connector permission set. From Apps, select Object Settings, and then select Contacts from the big list that you see on the screen. To change object permissions, click Edit. You want to enable Read Access for the RAVG Retail Points Balance field. Click Save. Now, having done that, we want you to go back to the Data Streams tab in Data Cloud, click on Contact, and click on Add Source Fields. Now, you will see the RAVG Retail Points Balance field. Select the checkpoints next to that field. At this point, you can also change the field label and field API name if necessary. Select Save. And then select the Update Status Action button on the right-hand side to refresh the metadata for the data stream. Go back to your mappings and validate that a new field is available to map. Should be there. Validate all of your mappings against the requirement. Click Close if you've already saved your work. Otherwise, save and close. Nice work. Learning how to map the contact data lake object and modifying permissions for a field within the source CRM object in Data Cloud enables you to maintain data integrity, data security, and compliance with data protection regulations. To learn more, be sure to check out our other videos. You can also search for topics in Salesforce Help or come join us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching.